So I'm going to read through The Tiger by William Blake. This is in preparation for the Edexcel IGCSE English Literature exam for paper one. Firstly, looking at the poem, uh, sorry, looking at the title of the poem, The Tiger, um, this is in parallel to another poem by Blake called The Lamb. Now, you don't need to know in great detail the other poem, but it is useful to know that the lamb explores the innocence of mankind, obviously, with the lamb being a symbol of innocence. Um, and I think that helps us understand what this poem is about, because the tiger quite obviously isn't a symbol of innocence. If anything, it's a ferocious animal that incites fear in others, despite its beauty. Um, so Blake really is presenting, you could argue, another side to mankind. So is the tiger a metaphor in this poem for mankind and its capabilities of great evil? Um, or he could simply be looking at the tiger as, as the literal animal um, as well. It's important to note at this stage, before we continue with the poem, that the focus really isn't on the animal or mankind, but much more so on the God that created either the animal or mankind. Um, so the poem is really exploring what kind of God would have created an animal such as the tiger. And it's really Blake exploring the Christian God because he was brought up Christian. Um, and, and trying to decipher what kind of God was he or is he. So the first stanza reads, Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night. What immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? So the first line reads very much like a nursery rhyme, especially with the use of alliteration of the T's and B's, tiger, tiger, burning bright. Um, and this is quite ironic because actually, the content of this poem is very complex, but it's almost deceiving you into thinking this is something quite simple um, with the kind of nursery rhyme feel to it. We'll come back to this at the end when we look at structure as well, because the meter helps create this nursery rhyme feel as well. Um, the fact that we have um, on the first line fiery imagery of this burning bright, we will come back to this because it is used throughout the poem, um, does create this sense of danger. Um, I haven't written it down here, but also beauty as well. Fire is very, very beautiful, but um, obviously it's, it's also very dangerous. And I think that um, represents the way we might feel about tigers. They are beautiful animals to look at but quite naturally they incite fear um, in us. Um, and he's directly addressing the tiger throughout this poem and asking the tiger, who on earth created you? It's set in the forest of the night. I think this imagery of, of night especially just um, helps create a mysterious environment and that reflects the mystery around um, God for Blake. Blake saw God as this great mystery and he would have just loved to have known what God really was like. Um, in this poem, he, he doesn't get any answers, um, really. It's more just about kind of exploring what he thinks God might be. Um, and we have allusions to the divine by using the word immortal. So we know that the focus of these questions is what kind of God um, created or framed this fearful symmetry. It's interesting that he juxtaposes fearful and symmetry. These two words, fearful obviously um, continues with the theme of fear and danger, um, but putting that next to symmetry also suggests that Blake had um, was in awe of whoever created the tiger. Symmetry suggests a skilled creator, someone who gave um, great attention to detail. And symmetry also is, is typically associated with beauty as well. Um, the first stanza ends in, in a question. We're going to see these questions continue. Um, the, the questions basically show the intrigue of, of Blake, just continually questioning what type of God created such an animal.
And then he continues in stanza two, in what distant deeps or skies burnt the fire off thine eyes? On what wings dare he aspire? What the hand dare seize the fire? So we have on the first line, um, allusions to heaven and hell, deeps or skies. We start thinking, well, what kind of God? Is he a good God? Is he an evil God? Um, that created such a terror, such a terrifying animal. Um, but I think there's a, I think this is where we get introduced to different concepts of God as well. Um, so it says, burnt the fire of thine eyes. So it suggests, again, we have this image of fire, but it says, suggests that the, the tiger was created out of fire, which obviously works really well considering the, the coat of a tiger very much, um, it looks or mirrors, um, a flame. Um, but I think it also creates an image of a daring God, one that's willing to play with fire. Um, so it's almost suggesting that God created the tiger, or if you wanted to go along the lines of, of the tiger being a metaphor for mankind, God took a great risk in creating such a ferocious creature, one with free will. Um, on what wings dare he aspire? What the hand dare seize the fire? So um, I've put some question marks here and there will be lots of question marks next to my annotations because I think there are so many different ways to interpret this. It really is open to your own interpretation and I encourage you to, to really think about what you take from it. Um, but if you're looking at Greek mythology, um, is he referring to Daedalus and Icarus? And I may be mispronouncing a lot of these, these names. Um, you don't need to know this story in great detail, but they, um, to escape their captors, created wings um, and flew away. They're known for not um, kind of for breaking the rules. So is this kind of a, a rebellious god? Um, Prometheus, so for the final line of this stanza, what the hand dare seize the fire? Could this be referencing Prometheus who stole fire from the gods to give to humanity, um, to encourage humanity to kind of evolve? Um, so just again, just, just, this is Blake just thinking, well, what kind of god or, or hero created the tiger? Um, was it someone who was quite so, so quite rebellious um, or did he create something to be quite rebellious as well? Um, moving on from that, we have, again, a continuation of questions. These list of questions just help remind us that Blake is just just really intrigued by this concept of God. There are no answers. And then the, the next stanza, and what shoulder and what art could twist the sinews of thy heart? And when thy heart, thy heart began to beat, what dread hand and what dread feet? Um, continuation of questions again. Um, but in this stanza, I think the focus is, is on almost a god that's molding the tiger, um, especially the word twist. So we've got this idea of, of, um, of this creation happening but I wondered if twist was also a play on words and if it was highlighting either the heart of the tiger of the heart of, of mankind being corrupted as well um, so is that a double meaning and when the heart began to beat so when that final stage happened and there was life in this thing that you, that God created the repetition of dread, I think, questions, did you instantly fear what you created? I think there's also, I haven't written it here, um, but does that link to Frankenstein as well? Um, this this idea of like fearing your own creation. And then the next stanza, what the hammer, what the chain, in what furnace was thy brain? What was the anvil, what dread grasp, dare its deadly terrors clasp? Um, so this whole stanza is focusing on God almost behaving like a blacksmith. I thought this was interesting to link to, um, he, I think you pronounce it Hephaestus or Hephaestus. Hephaestus? I'm not sure. Uh, maybe double check that yourself. Um, this God made weapons of war. 
Um, so this is likening God creating this tiger or creating mankind to um, creating something that is capable of great evil or great destruction. Um, so it's, it's again, Blake just questioning, why would God create something that would be capable of such terrible things? Um, and that's why I've linked it to Hephaestus or Hephaestus. Um, um, the likening of, of God being a blacksmith I've taken from, from diction such as hammer, chain, furnace, anvil. So this idea of, of God being in this workshop, hammering away, creating this, this terrible thing. And then the alliteration, dread, grasp, dare, it's deadly, terrors, clasp. Um, I think just adds to the horror of, of what was created and the exclamation mark adds to that as well this feeling of oh dear god what did i what did i make what did i create was there that fear or did he know exactly what he was doing um when the stars threw down their spears and watered heaven with their tears did he smile his work to see did he who made the lamp make thee so i question whether the stars is a metaphor for angels um and in that case did the angels protest at seeing what God had created? So let's take for, for now the interpretation that actually the tiger is a metaphor for humankind. When God created humankind or the human race, did the angels protest? Were they fearful of what humankind could create because he created a humankind with free will? So there are grave possibilities with creating something with free will so did they protest did they throw down their spears did they um cry basically and once he saw that and how the angels responded to this creation was he proud of what he created did he smile his work to see did he who make the lamb make thee um and i think that's really important the final line is really important um, because the question he's posing the question, what type of God capable of making a meek animal such as the lamb chooses to create an animal as ferocious as the tiger? So he's really, I think, coming to terms with the duality of the Christian God, a God that is punitive. In other words, punishing um, a God that's really fearful, but also a God that's that's um, forgiving. Another interpretation, which I haven't written down here, and you could go um, explore this, is um, the lamb being a metaphor for Jesus. Jesus often being referred to as the lamb of God. Um, so again, looking at this in terms of the tiger really being a metaphor for humankind, is he saying, did he who makes someone as wonderful as Jesus Christ also make humankind? Who, who, which in comparison to Jesus Christ is so flawed um, and so evil. And then the final stanza you'll notice is a repetition of the first stanza. So it frames the poem, tiger, tiger, br burning bright in the forest of the night, what immortal handle I dare frame thy fearful symmetry. So first of all, I think the repetition of the first stanza highlights that his questions will never be answered. So he'll always kind of go back to questioning the same thing. He's never going to get answers. And I don't think there's a frustration with that. Personally, I think Blake is um, maybe celebrating the complexity of God. He's in awe. Um, of this this other world that he can't grasp um, that's at least what I get from it um, but you could definitely see this as, as frustration as well that he never his questions are never answered and um, the one thing that changes in this stanza in comparison to the first stanza is the word dare so initially in the first stanza it was could um, so he's not questioning what God is capable of creating this animal now he's questioning what god would dare do it so i think this comes back to this idea of a god that takes risks and plays with fire um did god take a risk in creating mankind with free will um and does he regret it um or or is, was that his intention that he wanted to give free will and 
and um, kind of see what happens from there. And that was a, a great risk. So looking at the form and structure, we've got six quatrains. We say quatrains because they are stanzas with four lines and they are rhyming couplets because the rhyme scheme goes A, A, B, B. Um, some of the lines are trachaic tetrameta, which basically means we go from stressed to unstressed. There should be eight syllables in each line, but what you will notice is that many of the lines actually have seven syllables. Um, so what this does do is end those lines on a stressed syllable, which I think actually makes the rhyme scheme seem more powerful. Um, the tetrameter, so if you think about the um, the rhythm of this, we've got like ti uh, tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forest of the night. What immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? Um, so, I've already mentioned that I think that mirrors a nursery rhyme, but some have interpreted this as the blacksmith hammering away. So it's almost the rhythm of the of the hammer um, in the background. So God kind of hammering away in the background and um, creating this um, ferocious animal. And you'll notice the whole of the poem is a series of rhetorical questions that are never answered. Um, which again just emphasizes the complexity of nature. So um, overall, I think the important thing about this poem is to focus on the fact that Blake is not really focusing on the tiger, he's focusing on God or whatever created this tiger. Um, you can take it that he's focusing on the tiger. Um, sorry, you can take it that he's actually he's literally um, referring to a tiger or you could see this metaphorically as God creating mankind and in that case um, what he's really question asking is what kind of God could make something or someone as wonderful as Jesus Christ i.e the lamb um, and then make something so terrifying as humankind um, i.e the tiger.